Ladies and gentlemen, Behind the Line proudly presents to you another exciting edition of The Woke, Turning on the Woke. This episode is brought to you by the pretend journalist at USA Today. Are you in need of comedic relief? Are you tired of listening to YouTubers who give you the truth? If so, order your subscription of USA Today. We feature exciting journalists like the Star Trek virgin Mike Freeman. We have pretend feminists like Nancy Armour who wishes she looked like a young woman. Get your subscription now by calling 801-GAYUSA. Nancy Armour. <laughs> If Nancy Armour and Mike Freeman procreated, the baby would look like Rachel Levine. Now, of course, that's never going to happen. Nancy and Mike, they have a lot of things in common, one of them being their undying love for R2-D2. Last I checked, the bot couldn't get pregnant. He had his wires tied. I am incredibly confused this morning for a couple of reasons. Number one, I thought parishioners of Woke United Methodist stuck together. I know there's no loyalty in the woke movement, but I thought they at least tried to put on a good front publicly. With that being the case, why would Nancy Armour in USA Today publicly attack a woke welfare recipient at ESPN? Now, just to be clear, I don't think Sam Ponder is woke, but she does work for ESPN, which should grant her immunity. It should give her protection from the wanker spankers. And number two, I thought Nancy Armour was a proud feminist. Every March, she writes columns detailing the inequality in college sports. It's not fair. The men have access to electricity so they can play games at night. The men have access to weight rooms. How is Mary Mustache supposed to increase the size of her python if she doesn't have adequate equipment? Correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't we just talk about Nancy Armour? What was that? Last week, a couple of days ago, when she was complaining about the living conditions in the WNBA dump, I thought Nancy Armour was a warrior princess for women's rights. I mean, her middle name is not Xena for no reason. So I am incredibly confused as to why Xena would publish a hit piece attacking Sam Ponder. Nancy initially became triggered last Thursday. Last week was very, very triggering for Nancy. She started off her week experiencing the living conditions in the dump. Now, you would think this would be paradise for someone like Nancy Armour, being paid to be around all those masculine women. But then, it happened. Thursday, Sam Ponder sends out this tweet. This is outrageous! How come Sam Ponder doesn't have a beard? With a name like Sam, I thought she was a male identifier. I thought she was on our side. How dare this imposter advocate for fairness in women's sports? First of all, you notice how Sam Ponder states that she's barely said anything publicly about this issue? I wonder why. I wonder why Sam Ponder has been silent. Perhaps it has something to do with the fact that she is collecting woke welfare from ESPN. As you guys know, you are only allowed to have one opinion at ESPN. When it comes to Tran Dan, you must support his right to flaunt his python in the women's locker room. Now that single tweet, that could be enough to get Sam Ponder suspended at ESPN at minimum. Could possibly get her fired. Now, maybe she's just being courageous here. Maybe she is tired of the bullshit like the rest of us. Maybe she is a part of the upcoming layoffs and she just decided to be courageous because she knows she's going to be let go. I don't know Sam Ponder's reasoning. Either way, it doesn't matter because Sam Ponder is 100% right in her statement. Not according to Nancy Armour, though. No, 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 no. Sam Ponder is no crusader for women's rights. Nancy Armour knows how to properly identify feminine crusaders. I mean, after all, she used to be one. According to Nancy Armour, Sam Ponder is a bigot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That simple tweet has Sam Ponder facing criminal charges of bigotry in woke municipal court. The punishment for this crime can be severe. Judge Shea Shea can sentence you to dual cucumber insertion without the benefit of Preparation H. Nancy Armour accused Sam Ponder and the rest of us normal people. She accused us of cloaking our bigotry under the guise of fairness. This is not about fairness. This is about hate, fear, and ignorance. There's that word again, fear. 
I am afraid of jumping off of a skyscraper. People working at CNN, they are afraid of not having access to a lifeboat as the Titanic continues sinking. Those are cases of legitimate fear. No one is afraid of Leah Thomas. No one is afraid of Rachel Levine. Rachel Levine may instill fear in mirrors, but Rach doesn't scare normal people. Nancy Armour and USA Today, they are pushing the same tired narrative we have been talking about for the last week or so. The mainstream media is creating a fabricated war between transgender people and normal people. No one cares if transgender kids want to play sports. No one cares. If Tommy Tran wants to play football, get him a helmet. If Tommy wants to be a cheerleader, get him some pom-poms. If he wants to be on the girls' basketball team, he's shit out of luck. Wants to be on the girls' wrestling team, he's shit out of luck. If Tommy wasn't an identifier and his favorite restaurant was Hooters, you wouldn't want him in the girls' locker room. But if he puts on a blonde wig and a dress and starts calling himself Tammy, all of a sudden, it's acceptable? Nancy Armour also falls back on another tired narrative. It is the same narrative used by the prepubescent boy Meg Rapino and the other dudes on the U.S. women's soccer team. There are bigger issues facing women's sports that need to be addressed. Why are we wasting our time talking about transgender youth when there's only a handful of cases in each state? Well, that's an excellent point, Meggie. That's a very good point, Nancy. But let me frame that question a little bit differently. Why are we asking kids and parents to accommodate one or two other children? Why are the shit fucks wasting their time fighting for the supposed rights of a handful of people? I often hear the argument that we should create transgender divisions, have all the transgender kids compete against each other. I think that is something everyone can agree on, right? Even most wanker spankers can agree with that statement, but you want to know why they never bring it up? You know why they don't push for separate divisions? They know there's not enough transgender kids to make a division. If there was a transgender division in track and field in California right now, Aretha Ryan or I think it's Athena Ryan, who cares? The pretender would be standing out there all alone playing with themselves. Most of us normal people, we are busy this Memorial Day weekend. I know me personally, I have had to find ways to make time to get these videos uploaded. Traveling, family, friends, honoring our military, we're all busy this holiday weekend. But Nancy Armour lives a lonely life. She normally spends holiday weekends playing with her cats. All her cats have abandoned her because she gave their litter box to a fifth grader who chooses to identify as Garfield. So Nancy had nothing but time this weekend to dig through the Twitter account of Sam Ponder. What she found was very triggering, very alarming, very, very transphobic. Back in January, Sam Ponder, she committed another violation of the Woke Commandments. What did she do? She liked a tweet from Megyn Kelly. Megyn Kelly is on the top 10 most wanted list of normal people. Her picture hangs in the halls of every chapter of Woke United Methodist. Back in January, Megyn Kelly called out some dude for going to the gynecologist. Um, that seems like a valid complaint to me. No one wants to wait in line at the doctor's office. Imagine being a woman, a real woman. Waiting in line to see the gynecologist. You're patiently waiting for your name to be called. All of a sudden, you hear, Mr. Levine, please follow me. You see this gigantic bearded walrus walking towards the back, complaining about his fake cramps. If I were a busy woman like Megyn Kelly, I'd be pissed off too. Sam Ponder liked this tweet, and then she simply replied, Thank you. That's it. That's it. Two words. That was enough for Nancy Armour to accuse Sam Ponder of being transphobic. But it gets even better. Next, Nancy Armour tried to put pressure on ESPN to suspend Sam Ponder and her woke welfare. Clearly, this woman's not one of us. You had the audacity to fire Jamel Hill because she was diagnosed with a terminal case of OMB, Orange Man Bad. And now, you continue paying an actual woman who has a clear hatred for identifiers. I demand justice. Never mind the fact that I am clearly jealous of Sam Ponder. Every day she is complimented for her beauty, and I get mistaken for Joe Biden's mother. Sam Ponder should be punished for violating your bigotry clause. She also accuses Sam Ponder of taking advantage of her privilege. What privilege? I can assure you, 
working at ESPN is not a privilege. Now, I would assume Sam Ponder has wanted to speak publicly on this issue for years now, but she can't because she works at ESPN. Nancy Armour ends her propaganda by claiming boys are not endangering the rights of young women. Just because a boy wants to wear a tutu doesn't mean he's taking that spot from a girl. Oh, yeah? Well, uh, what the hell does it mean, Nancy? There's only a finite number of spots available. Let's look at this logically. If there are 15 spots on a basketball roster, 15 girls try out along with Brad Thundercock. Let's take a second to think of this difficult math. 15 plus 1, that is 16 people, 15 slots. If Thundercock makes the team and Innocent Iris doesn't, what does that mean? There's no other way to explain it. I keep hearing this word thrown around by the shit fucks, acceptance. We must be accepting of transgender people. That is absolutely fine. We can be accepting as long as they're not infringing on the rights of others, especially when it comes to children. Adults, we can fight our own battles. If you're in a rec league or something and your spot is taken by questioning Quentin, you can fight for yourself. Kids can't do that. This is not about acceptance. This is about compliance. This is about the shit fucks running out of causes. Mythical racism is dead. Mythical misogyny is dead. Both have been proven false. Both have lost all their influence. The fight for gay rights is over. They already have rights. There is a reason it's called the woke movement. They always have to be moving. They always have to be progressing. They have run out of causes and now they are trying to use children to further their sick narrative and they're losing. This is where they messed up. You can debate mythical racism. Sometimes even people like Stephen A. Smith, Jamel Hill, they make compelling points. But after you think about them for a few minutes, they can be disproven, but they can still be compelling nonetheless. But there is no debating this transgender movement with kids. This is something almost 100% of parents can agree on, and parents are pushing back. Black parents, white parents, Asian parents, Mexican parents, doesn't matter. The woke movement is designed to keep us divided, but they have finally messed up. They have finally pushed the one issue that can keep all of us united. But give me your thoughts. Nancy Armour accuses Sam Ponder of bigotry because she wants to protect young women. This sudden courage from Sam Ponder, this sudden willingness to speak out. Do you think she is part of the next round of layoffs at ESPN? You let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.